1987, I had a temporary cleaning job for a small Jewish firm that took me to 176 Casanova Road, Stoke Newington, London, N16. The resident was a 73-year-old woman called Mrs. Steinberg, an immigrant from Danzig in Germany, where she lived with her mother and Stefania, her younger sister. Her Polish husband, who served with the RAF as a fighter pilot, died a few years previously after a protracted illness. She came to England in 1948 after an extended period in hospital to recover, at least physically, from three years and eight months of near starvation with her mother and sister in the camp at Buchenwald. this Camp Feldwebel and his two fellow thugs and described the methods they employed to terrorize their victims. First they took her mother away and murdered her along with all the other victims due for slaughter that day. Shortly after that they took away Stefania and butchered her too but they allowed young Mrs. Steinberg to continue living because her hysterical grief and profound misery amused them. Ye gods, is there no limit to the level of depravity and brutality to which human beings are willing to sink? house in which she lived displayed one bizarre feature. On every shelf, on and even inside every bookcase, in the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom and even the bathroom were stacked tins of soup, vegetables, fish, meat, fruit and dried milk, plus packets of biscuits, sugar, tea and coffee. Noticing my perplexity, she explained, clearly embarrassed, that while she knew her behavior to be eccentric, when she arrived in England, in every flat and house she lived, she filled every room with stockpiles of food because, she said, she was determined never to suffer hunger again.
I departed, she made this single request. She asked me to tell my friends about her experience, purely to honor the memories of her mother and sister. I promised her I would do precisely that, and, to my eternal credit, I have continued to maintain that promise to this very day. So when I say the only good Nazi is a dead one, and you tell me that sounds like a fascist statement, my response is simply this. There are occasions when, in order to combat fascism effectively, one is required, regrettably, to adopt fascist methods.